Hello, my name is Giovanna Proens, and today we're going to talk about reverse problem set 4 of CS50. So in this problem, we're going to implement a program that will reverse a WAV file. So we're going to receive an audio, and we're going to reverse the audio and store in another file. We have a couple of things to do, and we're going to follow each step. And when things here are important, I'm going to go back to the background to understand the check-ins we have to do. So the first thing we have to do in here is to accept two command line arguments, the name of the input WAV file and the name of the output WAV file. If we don't have the two command line arguments, we should display an error message and return one ending the program. Let's start from here. I have my reverse file. At the right, I have my bottom up.c file. That is the other problem set we have in this week four. We're going to use this a lot in terms of comparing if we are in the correct part. So for the first to do in here, we're going to check if we are receiving three command line arguments. As we can see in here, we are able to check in the other project we did, we're able to check how many command line arguments we have by using this argc variable. So argc here will tell us how many elements we have in our command line. And always remember that the first argument is always the name of the file. And then we need to accept the input file and the output file. So in this case, we're going to have three files to work with. So we're going to do exactly this. If argc is different than three, we're going to print out a message, usage, copy, in actually usage reverse input dot wave and output dot wave this is our error message that i want and we have to return one as they mentioned here in the first to do great now in our second to do we're going to open up the input file and we need to open up in the mode of read only we're not going to write it down because here the input file we're going to read and we're going to write in our output file what we want in reverse order after we open up we need to check if the file has been opened successfully otherwise we should print an error message and return one for to exit the program. So again, we're going to do something similar to what we have in here. First, the, we're going to get here. We need to get what are we doing in our bottom up file. We're creating here a char pointer that we're going to get the address of our file that we're sending as the first command line argument. So now we're getting the address of our argv on position one. So the input dot wave. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to create a pointer in file equals to argv on position one. Then I'm going to try to open up this file to, so we can see if there's something inside. So I'm going to create file and I'm going to use a pointer again to store the file. Oops, here it's file in PTR. I'm creating this name for the variable and we're going to use fopen to open the file and then we can read the content inside. Here, what is the file we want to open up? Is the variable where we start in file. So in file is where we have our command line argument on position one. So argv1 should be input.wave. I want to open up in read mode only, read only mode. So in here, I'm going to do R B, and this is pretty much what we have to do. After we open up the file, remember that CS50 asks us to check if this was open as successful, successfully. So we're going to check if the file is equals no, because if the file is equals no, this means that we have anything in this file, and this means that we didn't open up correctly. So we're going to do if our file, our variable that is storing the file is equals no, we're going to print f a error message could not open and here I'm gonna use a string a yes to store our message okay and here I want to say the in file great I think here just for making this look nicer I'm gonna skip the line I forgot and here we have our printf and remember we have to return one again this is our this is what they are expecting return one okay so now let's take a look at the hint because it's important one thing that it's hidden here once we are open the file we must also close when we're finished using it so this means this means that we need to close our file at the end of our code so here at the bottom of everything I'm gonna do f close and the name of our file that it's in file and then this way we don't have any mistakes when we finish our code so I'm already doing this right now so we don't have any bug in the future great now let's work with the third to do here we should read the header from the input file recall that we have an alternative file here that already implement a structure a struct that can start the wave files header and here we can use this uh, to help us out so let's remember the previous week of CS50 where we were working with struct basically a struct we can create a variable that can contain multiple properties so for example in the filter problem or in the practice problem of this week we were working with an image 
And we saw that we can store the colors of an image creating a strict, where we can create a variable to store the value for red, green, and blue. So here, instead of creating a regular variable like an integer, a, a char, a string, any type of variable we want, here we can create our own variable, our own type of variable that can store multiple properties inside. And this is what's happening in this case. We have this wave header strict that is storing all the content about what a wave file needs. If we open up here our wave.h, we have this strict called called wave header and we have all these little details that we need when we're working with a wave file so we can get the format and here in the future we're going to see how format will be important the audio format the number of channels and so on so here this is where we can work with the file if we get the correct element in here to manipulate so our goal now is to create a variable where we're going to read the header so it's going to be some, something similar we were doing in our problem set so here I'm going to create a variable called header and the header will be in a format of wave header. So wave header again, this is the struct. So instead of saying int header, I'm going to create a header that will have this type and this variable header will contain all of these properties inside. Wave header and I'm going to call header. Then I want to read the content that we have in our input file and I want to store here in this variable header. So here I'm going to use fread. Since we already opened the file, now we're able to read the content and store in this header variable. I'm going to use here the, the message. We need to use this ampersand header. So we want to read and store in our header variable. I want to read a file that has the size of our strict wave header. I want to read with one here, this is the default value, and I want to read which content, the content that we have here in our mptr file. This is how we're going to read the content that we have in our input file and store in our header. All right, now we need to work with our fourth to do. So now in our fourth to do, uh, we should complete the check format function. This function takes a single argument that is our header, this header that we just created, and we're going to indicate if the file is indeed in a wave file. If it is, we're going to return true in this function. If not, we're going to return false. Before we do any manipulation in the file, we need to double check if we are correct. We are receiving the correct file with the correct extension. All right. So how can we check this? If we take a look here in the background, they are explaining all the the specification to be a wave file. And what are the main contents that we have to work here in the property file format? We have to see, we have to search if this file format contains the word wave. If it isn't, this means that our file isn't a wave uh, file. This is exactly what we're going to implement. Before calling the function in here, let's create in our check format. We are receiving the header and I want to run the debugger until this part so we are able to see what is header. Before I go on, I'm going to put a breakpoint here in our line 49 and we can see what we have so far. So if I do make reverse, and all right it will compile it's complaining about something we shouldn't co close in file we should close our mptr that's correct because this is the one we are reading and if i make reverse now we don't have any bug i'm gonna do debug 50 reverse the name of our input file input.wave and the name of our output file output.wave and then let's see what happens i want to stop here in the beginning of our code let's see if i'm able to all right, here we are. We sent three command line arguments, right? The name of the file, the name of the input wave, and the name of the output wave. So here in our argc is equal to three. Since argc is equal to three, we're going to skip this if statement because we are giving the correct usage. Then we're going to open up our file. So here we're going to create a variable called in file that will get the address of our argv on position one. So here we're going to see that in file is an address exactly for our input dot wave. All right, remember that pointers were always storing the value of an address. Then we're going to create a file variable that will be this mptr and it will be again an address all right, of our file. And since here we have some content, this if statement won't be true. Then we're reading, we're creating the variable header. And if we take a look here, these are the properties that I mentioned that this wave header contains. The type wave header has the chunk, si uh, chunk size, audio format, num channels. So here we have all the specification we need to check if this is an input uh, wave file. So once I run this F read, we're going to add some content in here. And now this is our goal. As I mentioned here in the background, we know that the file format must contain the word wave inside and let's search for the format here format is one of the properties if i expand we have here exactly the word wave so this means that this is indeed a wave file and this is what we have to search so here in our check format function we're going to do an if statement checking all these four letters and check if they are wave 
Okay, so how can we do this? Here I'm doing an if statement. I'm gonna say the name of our variable header dot and what is the property we wanna work? Format. And then I wanna check the first letter of our format. So here on position zero. This way, I wanna say that this equals to W. And here it must be in capital, all right? Because as we know, here we're gonna receive only in capital letters. Then I'm gonna do an AND because we need to check now the other three letters. So here, header.format on position one should be equals to A and header.format on position two is equals to V. And finally, header.format on position three should be equals to E. So this is our if statement. We're checking if we have the word wave in our format. If so, we're gonna return one. In C, we don't have the word return true, but we can use the notation that true means one and zero means false. So here I'm gonna return one. And otherwise, if we don't have these four letters, we're gonna return zero. So here we already implemented our function to check if the correct format. Now we need to call this function and we're gonna check if this function is returning as true or false. If check format is equal to zero, so remember, it will only be zero if this is not the correct format. So we're gonna display an error message, printf, for example, not a wave file, and I'm gonna go to the next line, and that's it. And then we need to return one, because they are asking us to do this, if I'm not mistaken. They are not saying necessarily we need to return one, but let's return one for avoiding any mistake. Now, the next thing we can do, and I'm not 100% sure if we should do this in the check format or not, you can decide. It's checking another thing that we can see here if you click in background. So basically, this is much more specifications about wave file. And if we scroll down, there is something interesting. Here it's saying that the audio format should be equals to one to be a wave file. This can be another checking we should do to double check that this is exactly a wave file. So after this if statement, you can do a second if, and we're gonna check this header dot audio format. And we can see here that we have this audio format equals to one. If he header audio format is different than one, this means again that this is not a wave file. So I'm gonna do the same printf in here. Okay, so far so good. Now let's move on for the fifth to do. In the fifth to do, we can now safely open the output file for writing. And again, we need to check if it was opened successfully. Now we're going to do exactly what we did for opening up the file in here. I'm going to copy and I'm going to do the changes. I'm going to create a variable called output to store the address of our command line argument on position two, so the output.wave. Here I'm going to create a variable out ptr and I want to open up the out file, but now not in read mode. I want to write, I want to open in write mode because we're going to write it down here in this new file. If this file is equal to new, this means that we weren't able to open up the file. Okay, that's pretty much what we need. And again, the same thing we did, we need to close our file. So F close out PTR file. So this way we are avoiding making any mistakes, everything perfectly, it's working. Our next step is to create the header to our new file. The same thing as we did in here for creating the header where we read, now we're gonna create a header to write in our output file. I'm gonna copy this one and instead of read, I'm gonna write as they ask. So here I'm gonna F write. In our I want to write what we have here in our header in our output file. Okay, this is pretty much what we need. So now we're allowing our file output.wave to be write it down in the future with the reverse order of our input file. Before we go to the final and hardest part, let's do the get block size to calculate size of block. So here in our next to do, we should implement this function get block size. And what's going on in this black, this get block size? We're going to make one calculation only. We need to calculate number of channels 